Hello and welcome back and today I want to talk about the brand new Synology, the DS2419 Plus. Now for those that aren't aware, Synology have actually released two brand new units in their disk station series today on the 14th of February. Now this device alongside the other unit that's just been released, the DS1019 Plus, are part of the 2019 series from Synology. This is the follow-up to the DS2415 Plus, and although a lot of the specifications seem very, very similar, they have brought the majority of them forward into this newer generation of devices. Now, this retails for about 1200 nickel without the VAT, and of course, without the hard drive media in this 12-bay device, and it arrives with the CPU inside an Intel Atom, the C3538, which is a 2.4 gigahertz based CPU, quad-core, and it also arrives with up to 32 gig of DDR4 memory across two slots inside. I believe by default it arrives with 4 gig, but of course you can upgrade more RAM as you go. Now, this gives you a great balance of internal power for SMB users, that's the middle ground of business users between amateur and enterprise. Um, on top of that, it also arrives with a phenomenal amount of storage. Now, don't get me wrong, a number of you, as soon as this was first announced, were asking why this doesn't arrive with similar hardware as this, the other new release on today the 14th. This is the DS1019 Plus. Now both of these devices are being released on the same day. This retails for about 500 and I think 550, something like that. And this one arrives at more than double that. But whereas that's a five bay and has a better CPU than this, this is a 12 bay with a much more business led CPU with that one being more media centric. So why should you buy this device well for a uh, start its predecessor the ds2415 arrived with a similar cpu but an older generation of atom cpus and far less memory it did arrive with that same support for 12 hard drive or ssds as well as support of ssd caching by putting ssds inside some of these bays and of course having um such features and functionality available with DSM 6.2 and of course DSM 6.2 with 7 in beta just round the corner fingers crossed now the device itself arrives within DSM all of those you know hugely feature rich applications that Synology have brought out you can center an entire business around a device like this using surveillance station for all your CCTV using active backup to back up all your different server and uh, PC and desktop and all those devices for a single user interface for your end users your staff your clients your family members or whatever you have got everything from Synology Drive, which is an alternative to Dropbox and Google Drive. You've got Synology Chat for all the communication between all those devices. You've got Synology Office, which is a dedicated Office application for Excel documents, Word, that sort of thing. Um, very um, comparable to Google Docs. On top of that, you've got Photo Station, Music Station, uh, Video Station for all your applications. You can run Plex on this, although 4K is very much off the table. On top of that, you have got Synology Moments, that great photo cataloging software. And I have done the entire overview of the software on DSM for this device. Um, and now most of those videos are just as comparable and useful to this device as well. And if you are a budding photo video editor, this has a great backbone of applications to support not just your media collection, but also media editing. Which brings me to the other reason why this is going to be preferable to you business users over this. Because, you know, in terms of hardware, we can talk about the LEDs there on the front that give real-time information about this device and the drives inside. The trays themselves are lockable and screwless in design. So, again, on there, you remove these side panels. See if we've got a hard drive to hand here in the recording room. Let's see what we've got. There we go. We have got a Seagate uh, Barracuda. And this is a 14 TB. Now, of course, you shouldn't be using Barracuda drives in a NAS like this. You want to be utilizing enterprise level uh, NAS hard drives or just NAS hard drives in general. But unfortunately, those are completely pre-populated in a different device. I've got just off camera. But again, installation of hard drives, incredibly straightforward. You pop the drive inside there. You get your clips, pop it in there, either side of that tray, wallet, wallet, wallet. Drive's installed, again, not going anywhere. Then I'm gonna stop looking off camera and actually at the camera. There you go, it's that straightforward. And then you can just lock the little tray by the key attached. On top of that, if you like, with the SSD caching, if you are gonna utilize an SSD, 
and get some of the read write boost that you can get with SSD cache. So putting one or two SSDs in some of those bays and filling the rest with hard drives for that bonus. What you can do is install a hard drive like this inside this device using the screw holes that you should be able to just see on camera. So there are screws inside the accessory pack of this device. And I know I said this was an unboxing video, but again, the box is massive. It's like this big on camera. It's gonna use up the whole damn thing. But again, you can put screws into the base here and then you've got your SSD pre-installed in there. Do check out my video regarding SSD cache to talk about the benefits. Um, but going back to my earlier point about why this is such a business-centric NAS, we can look at the rear of this device. Now we've got, sorry, ventilation there. I don't know how well you can make that out on camera. Where the Synology logo is, that's full ventilation inside the device. And if we turn it around, we can look at the good stuff. Now on the rear of this device, if we check it out here, we have got a PCIe upgrade slot. That's a big deal because now you can add 10 gigabit ethernet into this device. Now Synology have their own selection of one and two port cards in the form of the E10G T1 and T2 cards. They give you the ability to enable this device to not only be connected to a 10 gigabit ethernet network, which is great, 10 times the speed of usual ethernet, but on top of that, you can connect this directly to your PC or Mac system over 10 GBE, if you have a 10 GBE card in your system, or using a Thunderbolt 10 GB adapter, such as the Sonic Solo 10G, which is, oh, let's get that on the camera. There we go. You can use a device such as this, which will allow you to connect 10 gigabit ethernet on one end and Thunderbolt on the other, and therefore edit the device, I'd edit your files on the device live with everything from Final Cut Pro, Adobe, Photoshop, all of those sort of applications for you. Um, why they haven't included a pre-installed 10 GB card on this, I'm not hugely certain. As mentioned in other videos, Synology have had a real tendency to keep 10 GB at arm's length, something I've never quite understood. They've got 10 GB on some of their devices, but only the tippity top of the end. All of the mid-range units such as this and the 1819 Plus arrive with the ability to upgrade that port and nothing more. But nevertheless, having a 10 GB option is phenomenal for business users and something its predecessor, the 2415, did not have. Now we've got more USB ports there that can be used for localized backups via USB copy, and you can back them up either way if you so choose, as well as supported peripherals, so like UPSs and wireless connectivity. We have got, um, this port here is not a VGA port. I know you think it might be, but unfortunately it really is not. That port there is a COM port that lets you attach this device to existing systems in your environment and therefore communicate between them. Not on a NAS level, but just on an impulse and signal ping level. Um, at the bottom here, we have got two ports here that make this stand out quite a lot. Let's get this slightly closer to the camera to make this clearer. All right, let's get this there. Now, on the bottom, you can see four LAN ports. Those four LAN ports mean that you can attach one LAN cable and give, give yourself network or internet connectivity, or connect four, and effectively have four times the usual speed of transit of data on this device. So you can effectively quadruple your data um, transmission, the bandwidth available to you by up to four times. That means with link aggregation, 4 GBE, which in many cases is more than enough for a number of users. Don't get me wrong, if you start putting four, five, six or more drives inside this, you're not gonna get the speed ability and the speed options of a good RAID via 10 GBE, but having multiple LAN ports is hugely advantageous and something that if you've got even a budget smart switch, uh, the GS108T for example, or 105T from Netgear, they retail for about 30 to 50 pounds you can get those speeds to your network and edit live on this device. On top of that, an expansion port. This device gets its name, the 2419, because it's a 12-bay that can attach another 12-bay expansion. There's a Synology 12-bay expansion. So 12 drives isn't even your limit. You can go bigger and better. And that mini SAS port there really does help you get the speeds from that expansion that you want when spending that kind of a money, uh, much money. Now, in terms of accessories, there's the accessory box, you don't actually get that much because this device is designed to be network ready. So outside of network, there aren't that many accessories you're gonna need that you don't already have. So for example, you've got a couple of LAN cables there, Cat6A, 
apps that allow you to connect this to the network or the internet. And if you, you know, if you're using an ISP router, that's your modem taken care of, so you can run it directly into that. We have a power cable there. Something I'm surprised I've never seen with these devices. And this is something for you guys, Synology. Have you ever thought about maybe a dual PSU device, something that's got a couple of power ports inside? Because I know you're looking into that high availability thing, the UC300, and I think some desktop units could really benefit from dual power supplies because we've seen it more and more in different devices to have that option. And once you reach a business level like this, where you're centering your entire business around this device, that could be advantageous. Uh, on top of that, quick start installation guide, setup manual, screws for those two and a half inch hard drives, and keys for those lockable trays. And that's really it, that's all your accessories that you get when you inside it. The device is packed remarkably well in all kinds of foam, but the money really is in the device itself. And quite frankly, that's all it needs to be. It just needs to be a robust storage solution with all of those RAID options. And you can look in stuff with the, the software that can give you options like BTRFS and SHR, but I'm not hugely certain that they're supported on this device. I think that hardware allows it. And I know on more enterprise excess level devices, they've disabled um, B, uh, SHR as a RAID because they don't believe it's mature enough but I do know that BTR, uh, BTRFS is definitely available on this device but aside from that it is a worthy follow-up to the 2415 Plus. Some might argue it doesn't have quite the power boost in those years since the release of its predecessor that lives up to the title but we will be comparing this device against the previous unit very very soon. Otherwise if you are interested in buying this of course check out the guys at span.com 25 years in the biz, they know what they're doing, and it's available right now. Apart from that, don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you've enjoyed this video and found it helpful. And of course, send me a message via Twitter or via NAS Compares, where we've got the free storage advice section to you home and business users completely for free. Just take advantage of that. But otherwise, see you later. Thanks for watching.